Welcome to part four of my Meddings drill series. Um, and at the end of part three, I uh, finished preparing the cowling uh, for um, fitting back to the drill. And I plan to, um, to drill the hinge and uh, put that on. However, um, I discovered that the hinge is slightly too small uh, width wise. Um, it's, uh, it's an imperial hinge and it's a one inch wide hinge, that's when it's, um, when it's fully opened. And I think what I need is an inch and a quarter hinge. So I've ordered an inch and a quarter hinge and that'll be here um, tomorrow, I expect. Um, so um, I'll be fitting that quite soon, hopefully. However, I have a second problem, which is that the belt is yet again slipping off the drill. Um, so, um, well, I've actually already filmed this and I've already solved it. Um, so I'll show you in a moment how I did that, um, how I've uh, remounted the motor and uh, done various things to... Um, to get everything working properly once and for all, hopefully, <laughs> I'll be the end of that um, of that game. Uh, so that's coming up in a moment. Um, however, uh, just before I show you that, um, I promised to show the advertising literature that I got um, from uh, the, from the original um, uh, Medics paperwork from the 1950s when the um, when the drill was new. So um, let's have a look at that first. Here's the advertising literature that Meddings put out for the pace for a range of drills back in the 1950s. And from this I've been able to establish that my particular drill uh, is an MB2 model, the B standing for bench mounted uh, from the M2 range. And they also did uh, an MF2 version, which is a floor mounted version. There's a picture of that coming up in a minute. On the left hand side there, one or two of the, uh, the features of the, um, of the drills. Um, and uh, here comes the picture of the MF2. There it is with uh, specifications of the two drills, uh, speeds, chuck size, etc. So uh, pause that if you want to have a look at it, it's, uh, it makes quite interesting reading if you like that sort of thing. Um, and I must say thank you to uh, Tony Griffiths at www.lathes.co.uk for, um, for these images um, which you kindly allowed me to use and it's well worth having a look at his website, I'll put a link underneath if you're, uh, if you're interested in this kind of thing. Um, so looking at that, I'm wondering whether it's because the motor is tilting too far back. There's obviously something wrong in the relationship between that pulley and that pulley. And I wonder if getting them squarer uh, is the key to it. Uh, this is guesswork really. So I think what I'm going to do is space out the bottom uh, pair of bolts from the plate on the back of the, um, the uh, on the back of the pivoting plate on the drill. And for that, I've found these. Uh, thick washers, so I'm going to put those in. I can't get my finger in there. In behind there, in in between the blue plate and the grey plate of the motor, um, and hopefully that will make the motor a bit more true, a bit, a bit squarer, and um, stop the belt the um, the belt from dropping off. So I'll just do that uh, and give it a try, and come back to you in a moment. I've had the drill running with um, with the spacers that I mentioned a minute ago fitted. Um, and it does work, however uh, it's got a wobble and I've just taken it all apart again to try and work out what that is uh, and I can see that it's this plate on the back of the motor where it mounts onto it. Um, unfortunately to get to that I've had to take off the backing plate um, and all of the bolts and all the associated paraphernalia. Um, now when I took this out of the box originally these screws were loose and um, I tightened them up um, I think in this application they're getting vibrated free. Um, so I'm just going to have a look at those and see what they are and see whether I can perhaps replace them with hexagons and uh, perhaps I might put some Loctite on as well uh, back in a mo. It transpires that the bolts that are in here uh, holding the motor to the um, motor plate are M6 and the ones that I bought to hold the hinge on are M6 of course and um, as a stroke of luck they're on the left is the um, is the new one that I bought for the hinge, and there on the right is one from the motor, virtually the same. Uh, and I've got loads of these, so um, I'm going to replace these with these um, these cap head screws uh, with a lock washer, which I've just dropped. Oh, there it is. Uh, lock washers under the heads, and um, I'm also going to put on some uh, Loctite. And this is um, there are various grades of this. This is a pretty uh, heavy duty one. Um, screw it all down tight, and uh, hopefully that'll um, that'll stop the wobble. Here we go. Then. 
Okay then, so that's uh, those six screws torqued up really good and tight and they've got some Loctite in there as well. Just a bit spilled around the edges. Um, so that's not going anywhere now. Happy with that. And um, I need to remount that on the drill. I'm back in business. There's the belt fitted and it's on the, uh, on the lowest speed, 500 RPM. And if you look there, you can see that I've spaced out the um, bottom of the motor bracket from uh, from the motor mounting plate with that wide washer. And there's obviously an equivalent one on the other side. While I had all that apart, I also took the opportunity to replace the uh, random selection of old bolts with the new ones that I bought and uh, forgot to put on. But there they are now, with some nylocks on and some um, penny washers. So that's all a bit neater. I'm not 100% happy with the way that's mounted with the spacer at the bottom um, because it obviously means something else is wrong and I can't exactly work out what it is so it's a bit of a bodge but it's good and solid um, and I'll just have a bit of a think about it in the meantime. Um, so um, let's run the motor up, that's not connected, that is connected but it's, um, it's not um, fixed the machine at the moment. The pulley's going round uh, nice and true on the back there, nice and true on the front there, and uh, it's probably pretty impossible to tell looking at it on the video, but um, there's no wobble on the motor or on the, on the head anymore, so that's all running really nicely. Uh, I'm pleased with that, I'm going to stop that, so I can show you that there's quite a lot of slack in that belt it's not it's not tight what I discovered is that if the belt is very tight in other words uh, with this slackened off if I push the motor back um, and apply some force um, so that this is uh, is really taut you know bar taut all that happens is the motor as the motor spins the belt uh, works its way downwards, drops off the bottom of the um, of the pulley. So wrong pulley. This pulley, it um, it drops off the bottom. Um, so I found a compromise in terms of its tension. I suppose that's just something that um, I've learnt with experience of fiddling with the machine. Um, I've also, in the process of mounting all this, uh, moved this pulley slightly further down on the spindle. Um, if you remember back to part. Um, I don't know which part. I talked about um, the mounting of the motor on this on this plate here. I suspect it was in part one actually, and its relation the motor's relationship with the drill. How I didn't know exactly what it was. Um, now that's mounted right at the top of its um, of its plate. Um, perhaps I should have mounted it a bit lower. Um, but what I've done is to move the pulley down on the spindle, um, which kind of adds up to the same thing really, can't really see any problem with that. Well, it's been a couple of months since uh, since I last had a go at uh, finishing off the pillar drill. Uh, this was the brass hinge that was on it originally. Um, this was the stainless steel hinge that I bought and fitted uh, and to be honest made a complete hash off. As you can see uh, it's all distorted around the, around the holes. It's not up to the job. Um, and uh, uh, so I'll take it off again. I've now bought this, which is a heavier duty hinge, heavier duty hinge, uh, mild steel, uh, but it's thicker and wider. And uh, if you compare the profiles there, and I don't know if you can see that, um, obviously much bigger. Um, so I'm going to cut a piece of this off. I had to buy a metre and a half of it because that's the only size it came in. Um, and uh, have a go at fitting that. Well, that's worked out well enough. Um... That uh, heavy duty hinge is much, uh, is much better than what I've had before and uh, I managed to get 7 out of 8 of those holes in exactly the right place. Uh, that one I had to um, enlarge slightly but uh, it's uh, not the end of the world. Uh, the main thing is that that uh, cowling, if I can manage to lift it, come around this side, comes up nicely, sits on its stay and uh, there's no, there's no movement in that, it's absolutely rock solid, that's perfect. And uh, it will also sit down nicely. And quite a nice, uh, quite a nice shut line all the way around. So, uh, so that's good. So I think 
but that's everything that needs to be done now um, mechanically to it um, I've got this green paint to get off the bottom and uh, give it a coat of paint but other than that I think we're done found something interesting, underneath the bed here there are uh, a couple of um, half inch, no not half, quarter inch Whitworth bolts which bolt through the bed and into the back of here and there's a great big bolt in the centre um, so that allows the bed to turn one way or the other it'll come right out, if I take it right out I can show you the adjustment slots oh, it's heavy so there's a machined face here and a corresponding one on the drill and these three slots um, that you can put the tightening um, bolts in and there's the central pivot bolt there. For some reason the paint on this bottom part of the uh, of the drill was um, was quite resilient so before I came home on uh, uh, what day is it now Sunday so Friday I, um, I put some nitromores on uh, just a bottom out of an old can that I found and uh, that certainly seems to um, seems to have loosened it. Shan't have any problem there getting that off. And uh, done some strange things to the metal. Oh no, it's just residue that's coming off. Thought it rusted it. It has a bit. So I'll have to that with a wire wool, I think. Nitromoles work well. I've got uh, got 90% of the paint off there. Certainly all the green. Bit of the uh, uh, original grey remains uh, but it's stuck fast um, so I'm going to go with that. Uh, I toyed with the idea of leaving this part here in its original aluminium, it's a cast aluminium piece unlike all the other bits that are steel but um, it looks to me like it was originally painted and it's a bit of a rough casting anyway so I'm going to paint I'm going to paint that. Um, first of all though I need to give the whole thing a good old degreasing because of course I've been using it uh, for some months in this condition uh, and uh, and I greased it when I put it together. So I just need to get all of the uh, grease and um, dirt off the surface. I'm going to use some cellulose thinners, give it a good old wash down with that, and then uh, hopefully we'll uh, slap some paint on. That's the machine degreased. Um, I'm not trying to um, uh, do a sort of show standard restoration. Um, all I'm trying to do is protect the um, bare metal that I've exposed where I've drilled holes and filled them with studs and uh, various other bits where the paint knocks off generally tidy it up a bit so I'm not going to be taking it apart and um, painting all the parts individually um, I'm just going to mask off um, the handle and the knobs and such like in the motor and um, keep the paint from getting on those areas so that's all masked off and ready to go um, and here is the paint this is a etch primer Upol acid etch primer which I've used quite successfully on the bare aluminium on the uh, sides of my old Land Rover um, and it sticks really well, it's good stuff and as a top coat I've got this which is some cheap stuff from Halfords uh, Industry Grey um, what's it called? Enamel spray, spray paint simple as that um, so I figure that'll probably do the job It's um, about two days since I put the um, etch primer on, and that's now dried, and uh, yeah, it looks okay. Um, I think that'll be um, that'll be fine. Uh, so I'm going to start spraying on uh, top coat. It's been two days since I sprayed on two coats of enamel, um, two coats thereabouts. Of, uh, of the grey enamel and um, it's cured nicely, um, ready to um, ready to unmask. So that's what I'm going to do now. That's all the masking tape removed uh, and all the dust um, blown away. I've refitted the uh, swarf guard badge and uh, given the um, exposed bits of metal quick rub with a bit of emery and um, and some 3-in-1 oils to keep them uh, from getting any surface rust on them same with all of these um, 
little exposed steel parts. Um, so hopefully all should be good. I'll uh, come and get the camera and uh, walk around it. There's the old badge that I managed to salvage. Maybe you can make out Pacer on there. WA Meddings Limited, Pacer uh, Slough England. The uh, the black lettering that was uh, in that embossed part has uh, all disappeared. Don't really know how to, re how to renew that, um, but I'll just leave that as is, I think, unless anyone's got any ideas. Um, I don't think this is the original guard, but I've put that back on. Anyway, it's a bit stiff actually. Might want a little bit of. Oh no, it's the plastic part catching. That's fine. Uh, got a nice movement in all of this now. Pleased with that. And uh, I just think about getting some replacement uh, knobs for all these odd ones. So that's obviously one that someone spun up to match these original Bakelite ones. And this one um, is a gear knob, car, car gear knob. It's quite an old one, it's only got four gears. And uh, this one over here is a PVC one. But then I thought, well, you know, it's all part of the history of it. I don't really care that much um, for uh, renewing it all. And uh, there you can see the, uh, the new switch that I fitted, and the wiring, and the new motor. New motor that gave me all that trouble mounting it. But uh, that's all good. So, there we have it. I've, uh, I've enjoyed doing that. It's been a bit uh, bit tricky at times. But uh, on the whole, quite an enjoyable project. I hope you've enjoyed watching these, uh, this series of videos about the, um, about the Meddings Pillar Drill. Um, uh, it's, uh, it's really just me in my shed rambling on. Um, so uh, if someone finds it useful, then, uh, then that's good. Uh, this one's done. Um, I do have another little project lined up, and uh, here's a little taster. Eyes open for that one coming up in the near future. Cheers then. Bye bye.